What's cracking, big dogs? Welcome back to the HQ. Welcome back to the channel. I am Nicholas. This is BDGE. Big dogs gotta eat fantasy football. We're diving back into some players that you need to not draft. Do not draft these players in 2019 fantasy football players to avoid. We talked about the running backs to avoid. I believe it was on Saturday's video. So if you missed that, go check it out. I'll link it in the description. Today, we're going to talk about some quarterbacks, some wide receivers, some tight ends to get off your draft list, to get off your draft boards. Don't take them. All right. There are other players going in the same areas who you should be taking over them. As always, if you enjoy the video, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you are new because we're talking everything 2019 fantasy football forever. As always, we are going to be giving away one draft guide, which you can find on bigdogsdraftguide.com. Last week's question was, which of the top three rookie running backs, Miles Sanders, Josh Jacobs, David Montgomery, do you want on your season-long redraft team and why? The winner of last week's Mr. Awesome XYZ. It's actually a name you can pronounce. Never mind. I thought it was some crazy ass name and I just looked like an asshole doing that. He said he'd take Montgomery for a list of other reasons, but you are the winner. Make sure you hit me in the emails or the DMs on Twitter, Instagram, something like that. All that information will be in the description of the video. Congratulations. Today's question of the day for the draft guide giveaway. All you have to do is comment your answer down below in the comment section and you will automatically be entered into the giveaway. What was the worst pick you've seen in one of your drafts so far this year. If you've had a fantasy football draft, I want to know what the worst pick was, or the biggest reach. I want to know what round they were picked, who was the player, and why you think it was such a bad pick. Drop the big facts down below. I had the Big Dogs Gotta Eat NYC live draft. Um, I tried to stream it to the best of my ability, but I was a little tipsy. I uh, accidentally made a margarita with five shots of tequila, thinking it was only one. Never mind. David Montgomery went at the 205. And those in the live chat, while it happened, uh, <laughs> had a good time. They were quite disrespectful to my man Lucas. So shout out Lucas for that pick. But that was the biggest reach I've seen thus far. But also, I respect it. Listen, man, that's who we wanted. It's get your guy season. He knew he wasn't going to get him on the way back. Although he probably could have got him on the way back, to be honest. He wanted his guy. He went, got him. I respect it. Y'all didn't respect it, but it was still a good time. Let's get into the video. Again, thumbs up button if you enjoyed. BigDogsDraftGuide.com. Everything you need for your draft is on there. Let us get this bread. First up on this list is Marcus Mariota of the Tennessee Titans, currently the 25th quarterback off the board. So it's not like you're reaching. It's not like you are investing a lot of capital in him. But there are guys like Matt Stafford and even Jacoby Brissett at this point that are going behind him, which I would rather have over him. I don't know if y'all been watching this preseason, but Mariota has looked awful. Now, I don't really care about stats, but his stats have been awful. 10 for 20, 50% completion percentage for 87 yards, 4.35 yards per attempt. Less than four and a half yards per attempt. Now, yards per attempt is a pretty good gauge of how a quarterback is playing, statistically speaking, and that is not good. He's floating balls. He's overthrowing receivers. Something is wrong there. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's an injury we don't know about. Maybe his confidence is just completely shattered, which would make sense. But one of those two is happening right now, and it would be very hard to see Mario to finish the year as the Tennessee Titans starting quarterback. And for those of y'all that are just joining us for fantasy, you know, you're starting your fantasy prep now because your draft is within the next week, or, you know, you're just getting back into the NFL. The Titans signed Ryan Tannehill, former Miami Dolphins quarterback this summer. And those two are competing for the starting quarterback job. You might not think that's the case because it's Mariota's job. He was a top two overall pick. It's happening though. Like Ryan Tannehill is playing with the ones in these preseason games. With Mariota, I was kind of excited about him going into this year because I knew he was going to be such a buy low candidate. Like you were going to be able to pay almost nothing for him. And you look at them adding pieces. They have AJ Brown, who is an extremely talented wide receiver, but he's dealt with a hamstring injury for most of the entire summer. You have Derrick Henry. They were going to be more run heavy and maybe a bit more efficient as, a, as an offense. And he dealt with a calf strain almost the entirety of the summer as well. Are they going to push him to play in the first few weeks? Are they going to push him to, uh, excuse me, he's back at practice, he's going to play, obviously. Or are they going to push him to give him 20, 25 carries over the first four weeks? Probably not. They don't want to re-injure him. And you also have this offensive line. We've been talking about being so good for so long. 
And then they've never reached their potential. And now they have Taylor Luan, one of their best offensive linemen, suspended for the first four games of the season. So the problem becomes this. With all of those guys, whether it's A.J. Brown or Derrick Henry or Taylor Luan, either not playing or starting the season off slowly, Mariota is on a very short leash. So if he doesn't start the season off quickly, he could be pulled to Ryan Tannehill sooner rather than later. I just look at the offense overall and Mariota looks terrible. Um, Their weapons, I'm not bought into. The offensive line, I'm not bought into. Like how many passing touchdowns are they really gonna throw here? I'm off Mariota as my quarterback two in Superflex. I probably don't even wanna draft him as a quarterback three. If he falls into like the last round, yeah, I guess I'll, I'll grab him. But otherwise he is on my do not draft list. Someone else you shouldn't draft this year at the quarterback position. Uh, Andrew Luck, Indianapolis Colts. Because that motherfucker retired. Jimmy Garoppolo, San Francisco 49ers. Currently the 22nd quarterback off the board before Sam Darnold, before Matt Stafford, before Jacoby Brissett. I would probably take him over Brissett, but it's a lot closer than people think. I hate what I'm seeing out of San Francisco so far this preseason. Jimmy G looked better in the third preseason game. And I love Matt Breida. I love George Kittle, but the outside wide receivers, and I'm even buying into Tevin Coleman, but again, another running back. There are very few situations where you see a fantasy quarterback really succeed without having wideouts that can beat the defense and can put up statistically significant games. And you're supposed to have Dante Pettis here as the clear wide receiver one, and you could build the core around that. However, he's playing deep into these preseason games. These reports are kind of crazy. And now the fact that he played deep into the game caused him to pull something in his groin. And now he's less than 100%. Are they going to keep him out at the beginning of the season? I don't know. It's just a bad situation. Then we have Trent Taylor, who people pretend to like. He broke his foot. We don't know when he's going to be coming back. Hopefully the first week of the season. We have Marquise Goodwin, who is running as the clear number two. And it's only a matter of time before he breaks his foot and joins Trent Taylor. You look at his injury history. It is one of the most significant resumes of injuries we have seen in the NFL over the past five years. So I'm sure he'll be hurt at some point this year. So you have Pettis underwhelming, you have Trent Taylor hurt, you have Marquise Goodwin probably about to get hurt. And as excited as people want to get about Debo Samuel and Jalen Hurd, realistically, they are rookies. They are not going to produce significantly and they're backups. They're running with the twos. Debo got some run with the ones in this preseason game and I would like to see him run more with the starters. Unless they're starting out the gate as impact players, they're not going to make that big of an impact on Jimmy G. You look at the guys going around Jimmy G, it's Kirk Cousins, which I'd much rather have. It's Sam Darnold, who's behind him who I, at this point, after watching the preseason, I would rather have Darnold than Jimmy G. Give me Stafford as well. Until I have a real sample size on Jimmy G and really see him do it more than four games, five games at a time, I will not be relying on him as a quarterback for myself in fantasy football. So those are quarterbacks. Let's move on to some wide receivers. Antonio Brown of the Oakland Raiders, currently the 23rd overall pick right now, wide receiver nine. And it's just too early for me, given all of the variables and all of the shit you have to deal with when it comes to Antonio Brown. He's missed the entire offseason with all of this nonsense, right? And to be honest, I don't really care about the off the field stuff. Is his foot's healed? That's fine. He got a new helmet. I'm sure he'll be out there week one. But it impacts the chemistry that he should be building with Derek Carr. These are the intangible things that you need in order to succeed between a quarterback and a wide receiver. Maybe not having that chemistry with Carr, here's what it's gonna do. You saw one of the first plays of one of the preseason games, Derek Carr chucked up a ball, he lobbed it up with complete confidence to Tyrell Williams. He was like double covered at the time, throws it up because he's been building that chemistry with newcomer Tyrell Williams. And Tyrell Williams is a great deep threat. If them two have built the chemistry, maybe over the first, you know, three, four weeks of the season, instead of taking some of those deep shots to Antonio Brown, who would normally get those, he goes to Tyrell because he feels a lot better and has a lot more confidence throwing it his way. This ain't Madden where you just plug and stick players in and everything works out perfect because this guy's a 95 speed. Those things need to be lined up and they need to be in order in order for those things to happen. So if that happens the first month of the season, maybe three, four or five deep shots go to Tyrell instead of Antonio Brown, that could be the difference between 1,050 receiving yards on the the season and 1,250 receiving yards on the season. The difference between wide receiver eight and wide receiver 14, like those things matter. AB is obviously as talented as anyone we've seen at the wide receiver position in the NFL, but he's 31. He's in the middle of switching offenses, switching quarterbacks. It's a downgrade in the offense overall. It's a downgrade in quarterbacks overall. It's just too many negative variables. And I'm yet to see someone make a real positive point 
for Antonio Brown, other than he's just so good that he's going to overcome all that nonsense. So if you have a real positive anecdote to add to the conversation, I would love for you to change my mind in the comment section for real. In the second round, I'm definitely looking elsewhere. I mean, you look at Mike Evans as being picked two spots before Brown. So if you're on the clock and they're choosing between those two, it's Mike Evans, no brainer for me. I also have Keenan Allen and Adam Thielen going behind Antonio Brown, who at this point, I would rather have both of them because you look at Keenan Allen. If there's no Melvin Gordon, I think they're going to pass the ball a lot. And then you look at Adam Thielen, who has looked phenomenal with Kirk Cousins so far this season. I think he's going to be back closer to what we saw at the beginning of last year than the end of last year. But either way, I would take them over Antonio Brown. I just you hate what you're seeing in Oakland this offseason. He's just putting himself above the team. And I think we'll see that come out eventually. Like all the nonsense off the field stuff, it's all been about him. It's all about him. And that will eventually carry over. He had problems in Pittsburgh. And Pittsburgh went through a very good streak of good seasons. Like a, they were a very good team for a very long time. And now going to Oakland Raiders, who are were one of the worst teams last year year and they're not going to be that much improved in my opinion so the problems will arise very quickly for Antonio Brown so we don't like Antonio Brown one thing we do love is a website called teamstake.com if you are the commissioner of a league or if you play in a fantasy football league with friends family co-workers whoever y'all have to know about teamstake.com this is where you can enter your league information you literally just sign up and say hey I play on Yahoo the name of the league is this enter boom They give you a URL and you send it to your league mates. You no longer have to collect buy-ins. You don't have to run around for cash. You don't have to ask people for PayPal. You don't have to ask people for Venmo. You don't have to carry the cash on you throughout the year and hope that you don't spend it accidentally when you're out at a bar and you're drinking like 42 marks and like, oh shit, I just spent George's buy-in on the last three rounds of tequila shots because I've been there a few times. I'm sure some of y'all have too. So if you're the commissioner or if your friend or your family member, your coworker is the commissioner, Tell them to sign up on teamstake.com. All they got to do is send over the URL to the teammates, the league mates, and they can just buy in through there. You don't have to worry about anything. The payouts, the buy-ins, all customizable. You can have first place money back, second place get money, third place get money, seventh place get money, the weekly most points scored, getting money. Very customizable, very, very simple to use. I'm telling you, you need to be using teamstake.com for your leagues. Thank you, Teamstake, for sponsoring today's Video, let's move on to another wide receiver that I absolutely hate, and I I hate that I even have to waste my breath on this, but A.J. Green of the Cincinnati Bengals. The only reason I'm bringing him up, and y'all know if you've been following me that I I hated A.J. uh, AJ Green since like May because of the foot injury last year, but his ADP right now is 65 overall, wide receiver 26. That is FFPC ADP. Those are high stakes redraft leagues, and that is over the last two weeks of the season. High stakes players, last two weeks of the season, last two weeks, previous two weeks, 65th overall. That is almost a fifth round pick. That's almost creeping into the fifth round. So people are taking AJ Green in the fifth, sixth round. I, on for on everything you love, please do not take AJ Green in the fifth or sixth round. The reports right now, very best case scenario is that he returns in week three. He's on a knee scooter. He has yet to begin any on-field rehab work with the team. I would put money that the very best case scenario is actually closer to week five maybe even deeper into the season. He already had huge injury concerns coming back from the major foot surgery, the toe surgery from last year, which people completely undermined and acted like it wasn't a thing whatsoever, which I was adamant about April, May, June, whatever, that he was a big re-injury risk. And then what happens? He gets hurt. And now people are going to act like this injury risk is really not that big of a deal either. Best case scenario, like I said, probably week five, maybe deeper into the season. And then after that, the following subsequent weeks, He won't be at 100% full snaps. It's not like you're getting 100% of the snaps from A.J. Green one week back from this another serious injury. He's going to be out almost two months, maybe three months by the time he comes back. He's not going to be a full-time player when he does get back. It's a shitty situation. I feel bad for the dude, but please don't draft him in the fifth or sixth round if you think you're getting a steal, you think you're getting a value wide receiver one, because that ain't happening, guys. Double-digit rounds for A.J. Green at the earliest. I probably am completely off AJ Green. He won't be on any of my boards, but I know there will be people out there on the internet that like to do their own thing and say, no, he's a value. He's got the upside. No, he fucking doesn't. But if you're going to pull the trigger, please wait till the double digit rounds. Same thing for this guy, Corey Davis of the Tennessee Titans, currently the 84th pick overall wide receiver 37. Last year, he had a 27% target share, which was the eighth highest in the NFL among wide receivers. And he finished as the wide receiver 27 in fantasy football. That's just saying it. 27% of the targets, eighth highest, but only wide receiver 27. Now they added Adam Humphreys. Now they added AJ Brown. 
They get Delaney Walker back. I have no faith that Delaney Walker stays healthy for the whole year or he plays a full slate of snaps. If he's on the field, that's even more takeaway from Corey Davis. So his target share is going to dip. And listen, I understand Corey Davis. It's not, he's not the problem. He has talent. I don't think he has the talent where he was drafted. People are going to keep holding on to the fact that he was drafted so highly. It's not his problem. It's a quarterback problem. It's a team problem. But the problem within that problem is it's not getting better. It's not like they fucking drafted a number one overall quarterback and things are a positive outlook. Like I already told y'all that the Marks Mariota, Ryan Tannehill situation looks really shitty and you don't want to be drafting weapons around them. Combine that with the fact that this team obviously wants to go more run heavy. I don't see a scenario where we're going to see any sort of consistency out of a guy like Corey Davis. I mean, he showed no consistency whatsoever last year. So what's the difference going into this year? Like, yeah, maybe Marcus Mariota is a little bit more healthy, but um, he has a long injury history and he's probably going to miss some some time this year. And now they added more weapons. So I think that combats itself. No consistency last year. He had three big games, which really floated his entire season. Three games of over 95 receiving yards and a touchdown. Outside of that, 13 games. The other 13 games, 62 receiving yards or fewer. So he basically put up a dud for you in 13 of the 16 games. Like how many passing touchdowns do you think this offense is going to throw? Right? I brought this point up with Mariota before. So it's like, I will let someone else enjoy those 6.7 fantasy points per game that you're going to get out of Corey Davis. And you just look at the other guys around him, Curtis Samuel, Will Fuller, Watkins, Marvin Jones, Sterling Shepard, MVS. I would take every single one of those guys with the exception probably of Cortland Sutton over Corey Davis. So not saying he won't be a thing in fantasy football. I just don't think he'll be a thing this year. Last wide receiver up on this list. Similar to Corey Davis in a sense. Alshon Jeffrey of the Philadelphia Eagles, current ADP, 71st overall, wide receiver 29. I can't pull the trigger on Alshon Jeffrey in the sixth round, seventh round. When it gets to my pick in those rounds, he's on the bottom of my list, and I always end up looking elsewhere. And, you know, I always make fun of people for talking about how A.J. Green is such an elite player, an elite this, an elite that. And he is from a raw talent standpoint. From a fantasy football perspective, though, he's not. Like you can argue that he was for a stretch of time at certain times, but if you're not be, if you're not able to be an elite fantasy producer for an entire season, then you're not an elite fantasy player. It's a numbers game, it's statistics. You don't get to argue. It's not your fucking opinion. You either do it for 16 games and you're an elite fantasy wide receiver or you're not. Alshon Jeffrey is the same thing, but to a much worse degree. At least when AJ Green is on the field, he does it on a per game basis. If you have him for half the season, he puts up half a season of elite numbers. Alshon Jeffrey just gets this hype. You know, you make excuses. It's like injuries, bad teams, bad quarterbacks, same thing for AJ Brown. But at the end of the day, it's like you just get it done or you're not elite. With Alshon, it's like fantasy owners are grasping at this 1400 yard season in 2013, six years ago. Like, let it go. Like, that is no longer his upside. He is old. You look at his last four seasons in the NFL 800 receiving yards, 821, 789, 843. He has not cracked 850 receiving yards in five years. He is constantly hurt. Over the last four seasons, he has played in over 13 games one time. You look at the situation, Carson Wentz has so many weapons to throw to between Alshon, Deshaun Jackson, Nelson Aguilar, J.J. Arcega Whiteside, Zach Ertz, Dallas Goddard, Miles Sanders. It wouldn't surprise me whatsoever if Jeffrey ended up finishing third in the team in targets, receptions, yards. So you can give me a guy like Robbie Anderson, who's getting picked behind Alshon Jeffrey as the clear wide receiver one in an offense that might be a lot more explosive than we predict over Jeffrey, who's going to give you 800 receiving yards. It's what he's done the last four years, and that's who he is at this point. Whether it's because of injuries, whether it's because of other players in the offense eating, we know what Alshon Jeffrey is at this point, and it's he's not the 2013 version of Alshon Jeffrey. I'm sorry to be the one that had to tell you this, but stop taking him in the sixth round, people. Thank you. Those are the wide receivers. I would also like to uh, give another shout out to the second sponsor of today's video, and that is the Sleeper app. If you are new to fantasy football right now, the Sleeper app is the fastest growing platform for fantasy football. Like forget Yahoo, forget ESPN, forget all of those platforms. Sleeper is like the most fun, customizable platform to play on. They put an emphasis on communication. So they have league chats within Sleeper. It's also giving you breaking news updates. You can join private forums, whether it's the Big Dogs Gotta Eat Fantasy Football Private Forum, which I will invite you to if you go on Sleeper and add me as a friend. I believe it's just Nick BDGE. Link it in the description. So you can add me on there. I'll add you to the private forum for Sleeper. The leagues are really fun. If you've ever seen the draft boards that are red and yellow and green and blue on the internet, that's from Sleeper. Super customizable leagues, but again, an emphasis on communication. So you don't have to worry about like text messages, group me, WhatsApp. It's all within the platform as well as like breaking news, sort of like involving Roto World into their forums and stuff. So if you have not yet switched your league over to the Sleeper app, please do so. I will link the download in the description 
for the apps. They are phenomenal. They are the quickest growing fantasy football platform on the interweb. So thank you for sponsoring today's video. Right before we sign off, though, I would like to say don't draft Kareem Hunt. Don't draft Jarek McKinnon. Don't draft these guys that are about to miss significant portions of the season. And as I always say, do not find injuries in fantasy football because they will find you. Injury optimism is too damn real. So remember that when you are in the middle of your drafts this weekend and you're like, eh, he has so much upside, but he's hurt. He's hurt. He can't hit the upside when he's hurt. And those things linger because players push themselves to play and that puts them at a much higher risk of re-injuring whatever it is that they are playing hurt on at the time. Don't draft injured players. Number one tip, we out of here. So if you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. Go download Team Stake for your league buy-ins. Go download Sleeper and switch your league over. They're very easy to import whatever league you currently have, whatever platform you're on. You can import it right over to the Sleeper app and I promise you, you will not regret that. That's all we got for today. Check out BigDogDraftGuy.com for everything you need for your 2019 fantasy football draft. Thank you for sticking around this long.